Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, July 27th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. America's largest EV maker, Tesla, had another dynamic week. During the company's earnings call, leadership reiterated that production began last month on their affordable model, which was described as a stripped-down version of the Model Y, and it's set to launch in Q4. Elon Musk commented on the Model Y pricing strategy, saying the desire to buy the car is very high, just people don't have enough money in the bank now to buy it. Musk also cautioned investors, stating Tesla could face a few rough quarters in Q4 of 2025 and into Q1 and Q2 of 2026, primarily due to the expiration of the $7,500 federal EV tax credit in September and reduced regulatory credit revenue. During the call, year-over-year -year energy storage and supercharging network growth were bright spots against a backdrop of declining vehicle sales. Speaking of supercharger growth, last week Tesla also hosted a grand opening of their long-awaited drive-in diner supercharger location in the heart of Hollywood. The two-story, 9,300-square-foot venue features 80 V4 supercharging stalls, making it the largest urban supercharger station in the world. The site is compatible with all all NACS-enabled EVs and open 24-7, including the restaurant. Two LED screens display movies, SpaceX launches, and television shows with audio synced directly to Tesla vehicle speakers via the Tesla Diner app in their vehicle's touchscreen. The location's gift shop sells exclusive merchandise like supercharged gummies, t-shirts, and Optimus action figures. The diner serves locally sourced farm-to-table classic American fare like burgers, fries, and milkshakes, all served in cartoon Cybertruck-shaped boxes. Tesla owners can order food ahead via their vehicle's touchscreen, with the diner automatically notified of their arrival and supercharger stall number for seamless car hop delivery. Non-Tesla drivers can dine in or order at kiosks. On the X platform, Elon Musk said Tesla would build more supercharger diners if the concept succeeds, including at Starbase, Texas. The future of EV charging is here. About a dozen miles away from the Tesla diner, British Petroleum's electric vehicle charging division, BP Pulse, activated its largest U.S. charging hub. Situated near Los Angeles International Airport, the collaboration with rental car provider Hertz offers 48 DC fast charging bays, including 32 150 kilowatt CCS compatible tritium dispensers and 16 400 kilowatt Alpatronic dispensers with NAX connectors. Pricing currently ranges from 40 cents to 60 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on the time of use. The hub, partially funded by a $2 million grant from the California Energy Commission, is open to the public, designed to serve rideshare drivers, rental car customers, and local EV owners alike. The site also features a lounge, restrooms, vending machines, and free Wi-Fi, set to be available soon. BP Pulse plans to install approximately 2,000 additional charging ports in the U.S. in 2025 as part of its $1 billion investment to expand EV charging infrastructure by 2030. We've previously reported on their partnerships with Travel Centers of America, Simon Property Group, LAZ Parking, and Waffle House, which are a part of that rollout. Speaking of government-subsidized charging infrastructure, the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, known as NEVI, is back in operation. This week, the state of California announced their second round, awarding $36.8 million for DC fast chargers across the state's highway corridors. California-based EV Gateway was the top most awarded with 33 sites for $14.7 million. Washington-based EV charging company Electric Era emerged as the second most awarded recipient, securing 16 sites for $11.2 million. To note, the online NEVI dashboard we had told you about in previous episodes is also back online, but it has not yet been fully updated with this latest award information. Another great source to keep up with this type of information is from the team at Perrin. I've included links to each in this video's description if you want to learn more. As thousands of new dispensers are installed with support for North American charging system connectors, more non-Tesla EVs are gaining access. This week's newcomers include Honda and Acura. 
Honda will sell the new NAX adapter for $225 through their respective dealers and their Dream Shop website. This opens up 23,500 selected Tesla superchargers for Honda and Acura owners across the US. The brand says that initially the Tesla app will be required for Honda and Acura EV owners to initiate charging at Tesla superchargers, but that integration with the Honda Link and Acura EV apps and plug and charge capabilities are currently in development. Lucid Motors also announced that their Air models will gain access to NAX connectors beginning July 31st with a Lucid approved adapter. Pre-orders are now open for the adapter which Lucid is selling for $220 with a shipping date expected on August 29th. It should be noted that the maximum charging speed for the Air on superchargers is 50 kilowatts. The voltage limitation stems from a voltage mismatch between the Lucid Air's high voltage battery architecture, rated at over 900 volts, and the Tesla supercharger's output, which currently supports 400 to 500 volts, combined with the limitations of the Lucid Air's onboard voltage converter. The Lucid Gravity SUV, designed later, incorporates a more advanced voltage boosting system using its rear motor drive unit, allowing it to charge at up to 225 kilowatts on 500 volt Tesla superchargers, avoiding this issue. But more positive NAX news came through this week. Several episodes ago, we reported on the launch of Rivian's latest quad motor R1 models, which come with a native NAX port. With these new models hitting the road, Rivian has begun swapping some CCS connectors for NAX on their own Rivian Adventure Network dispensers, including at their Southern California Joshua Tree charging post. Their Hamptons and Yosemite outposts will receive a similar update in August. The migration to NAX will take time, but it's great to see automakers and other charging networks make the switch for better charging flexibility for all. More options help drive competition for enhanced amenities and pricing for EV charging. BMW iVentures, the venture capital arm of BMW Group, has co-led an investment with Fortescue Ventures, contributing $11 million of funding into Estes Energy Solutions, a U.S.-based company specializing in battery technology. The capital will help Estes complete the development of its chemistry agnostic battery pack platform and establish U.S. manufacturing capacity. Their pilot line is expected to produce battery packs within the next five months. Estes says their modular platform addresses cost-sensitive applications with LFP-powered variants and mass-sensitive applications with nickel-powered variants. They offer both 400 and 800 volt systems starting at $150 per kilowatt hour, which can be stacked for a total capacity of 2.2 megawatt hours. They claim both systems are suitable for heavy use applications like class eight trucks, buses, and marine applications, and are seamlessly interchangeable with one another, offering OEMs the ability to serve varying markets from a single integration effort. The company is led by several engineers who were previously employed at Tesla and the electric bus manufacturer Proterra. BMW iVentures has previously invested in Colorado-based publicly traded solid-state battery manufacturer Solid Power and Michigan-based battery producer Rnext Energy. I've added a link to some of my previous Rnext Energy coverage in this video's description. BMW Group is not currently involved in the heavy-duty vehicle or marine sectors and has not yet announced any specific plans for the use of the Estes platform. BMW does, however, build some great electric motorcycles. Producer Tim rides a futuristic CEO4 and he loves it. And I have posted on social media several times this summer with my Zero DSRX electric adventure bike. This week, fellow electric motorcycle brand Livewire has opened the door a bit wider for others to go electric on two wheels. Harley Davidson's Riding Academy at Bartels Harley Davidson in Marina del Rey, California became one of the first in the US to offer motorcycle training courses using electric motorcycles from Harley Davidson's Livewire brand. The program integrates the Livewire S2 Mulholland and S2 El Panista models into its Motorcycle Safety Foundation rider courses, allowing new riders to focus on core skills like balance, 
braking, and control without the complexity of clutch and gear operation. Graduates will receive a DL389 Certificate of Completion, which waives the riding skills portion of the motorcycle endorsement process in California. To obtain a valid motorcycle endorsement, graduates must present the DL389 at a California DMV and pass the written knowledge exam. Livewire says they plan to expand electric rider training across the country. If you want to sign up for the course, you'll find a link in this video's description. Be sure to select the course type, New Rider Course Livewire, to ensure it's electric. This is very exciting news that will help riders who don't ever intend to ride a gas-powered motorcycle have the opportunity to receive their endorsement in a more accessible way without the challenge of mastering a clutch and shifting. I surely would have chosen a similar option when I completed my motorcycle safety course last year. During my training course, some participants quit the class after frustrations while learning how to operate a clutch. That skill is not useful for those who ride electric motorcycles and scooters. I'll include a link to my Rivet Anthem motorcycle review in which I share more of that experience and the finer details of living with an electric motorcycle. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so we can continue producing this program. Thank you all for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.